So the initially the field, you know, the development that enabled this more equal to matter platform was the fact that we can do this. Yeah? We have a new degree of freedom in condensed matter physics and material science. We can do something that we couldn't do before the advent of two D materials. Sometimes this is called twistronics, and this is basically the fact that we're able to change the relative twist angle between two two-dimensional crystalline structures at will. Okay, we can choose to stack two D materials with a twist angle of 20 degrees, 40 degrees, 1.1 degree, why not, as I will show you. And the electronic optical mechanical properties of these materials can change dramatically, as I will show you. Huh? Now, why would you want to investigate this more quantum matter, okay? So this, this part will become clearer as, as I proceed with my talk, but let me give you a quick summary here. So first of all, it's a very easy way to obtain isolated flat bands to investigate the interplay between kinetic energy, interactions, and topology. Second, it's with a few simple building blocks, for example, graphene, flexan labor, nitride, or transition method like alkogenides, you can obtain a plethora of correlated and topological behaviors, okay? So this brings up the question of what are the key essential ingredients needed for complex emerging behavior of quantum matter? For example, it's clear that you don't need the entirety, entirety of a periodic table of chemistry to observe some of these correlative behaviors. Now, this is a very highly tunable in-situ platform. Okay? You can tune with electric field, electrostatic doping, strain, pressure, magnetic field, temperature, et cetera. And it's tunable also through the twist angle or type of Moray system. And finally, it's a novel experimental platform to explore vast new families of hybrid materials based on non-equilibrium growth or assembly. Okay? Now, if you put graphene on top of graphene and you twist the angle between the two lattices, okay, a moray wavelength, you know, a moray pattern forms where the moray wavelength, the distance between the soccer balls in the screen, is roughly inversely proportional to the twist angle, at least for small twist angles. Now, that's what happens in real space. What happens in momentum space and therefore to the electronic structure? So let's take graphene. This is the electronic structure. This is the you know, the Dirac cone, if we have a finite Fermi energy, we have the Fermi surfaces are these disks at the K and K prime points. So if we put another layer of graphene on top and it's at zero twist angle, then the electronic structures are on top of each other. If we now rotate by some twist angle theta, then the Dirac cones get separated by a momentum distance, which is proportional to the sign of theta half, okay? So twisting leads to layer Dirac cones separating in momentum space. Yeah? The reciprocal spaces rotate by the same amount as the real spaces. So let's assume that we start with a small twist angle so that the separating in the momentum space is proportional to the actual to the angle. And let's see what happens to the electronic structure. So this will be the situation that will occur, okay, if the graphene electrons in one graphene layer did not know about the electrons in the other graphene layer. Okay? But when we stack, when we put graphene on top of graphene, electrons in one graphene sheet are very much aware of the other graphene sheet, in particular the can tunnel between the two sheets. Okay? That interlayer tunneling leads to a band gap opening, okay, to gap opening at the intersection of the original graphene dispersions from layer one and layer two. This gap opening is proportional to the interlayer tunneling. This is the situation when this interlayer tunneling is much smaller than the energy of that crossing point, okay? However, if we now go towards smaller and smaller twist angle, and we decrease the twist angle, then this interlayer tunneling becomes of the same order as this energy of this crossing point, and therefore you reach a condition for which this lower band, which gets pushed down and pushed down in energy, reaches zero. When that thing happens, we say that a flat band condition has been realized or has been reached, and that occurs at a magic angle, which was, you know, calculated theoretically to be 1.1 degrees, okay? By Mr. Sarah McDonald, and there was also work by Suarez Morel and collaborators. The group of Ivan Dre at Rutgers also studied STM spectroscopy, looking at Van Hoff singularities that occur at these energies, and they saw that those Van Hoff singularities go to zero energy at about 1.1 degree, okay? So there was already about a decade ago, very interesting single particle physics work 
about the system. Now, this, uh, you know, the thing that I showed you before was a cartoon. Okay, this is a cartoon. This is an actual calculation of the electronic structure versus momentum, you know, energy versus momentum for magic angle graphene at 1.1 degrees. You can see here these flat bands. They're not completely flat, but they are much flatter than the original graphene dispersion. And if you think about electrons in momentum space in a flat band, <coughs> so where would the electrons like to be in real space? Yeah? So flat band means in, in momentum space, to go to real space, you need to do a Fourier transform, okay? And that means the Fourier transform of a flat object is a highly peaked object. As a result, if you look at where the electrons like to be in magic angle twisted by layer graphene, they like to be on regions where locally the stacking is AA type, okay? Now, these regions are separated by regions where the local stacking is AB or BA due to the you know, small twist angle, there's a change in the registry of the atoms. Okay? So schematically from the top, magic angle twisted by layer graphene looks like this. You have these AA regions where the electrons like to be. They're separated by AB and BA regions where the electrons do not like to be. In a slightly more realistic schematic, magic angle graphene consists of these regions of AA stacking highlighted here in yellow, where the electrons like to be. These regions are separated by 13 nanometers. And the regions in between are these regions of AB and BA stacking, okay? This is going to form the equivalent of a triangular Fermi Hubbard lattice. I said triangular in quotes because, you know, these AB and BA regions are not identical. So this is in reality, this is a honeycomb structure. And I say, I put Fermi Hubbard in quotes because in reality, this lattice has an interesting topological structure that prevents a direct mapping to a standard Fermi Hubbard lattice of the usual type, okay? But you get the idea that this is something you know, which is going to be a little bit like those cold atom lattices. Okay, so how do we fabricate these devices? This is something that many people ask me. So we start with, you know, a glass light which has a polymer stack. Then we bring a substrate which has hexagonal boron nitride on top. This is an ultra flat material which is going to serve as a substrate for the magic angle graphene. We pick up this substrate with a sticky polymer. Okay, I mean, we pick up the HVN. So now we bring another substrate with graphene on top of it, with a monolayer of graphene, and we position our boron nitride such that it's more or less halfway on top of it. Then we come down and we tear half of the graphene. Okay, from the top, it looks like this. We have the glass light with the polymer, the HVN, and half of the graphene. And then we have the substrate with the other half of the graphene. Now we can, you know, because these two halves come from the same flake, they're crystallographically aligned, even though they are at different heights. Now we can rotate our substrate by any angle that we want. For example, 1.1 degrees, why not? And then we can shift it on top and we can stack it. Then we can pick up that graphene, and now we have this heterostructure, two layers of graphene at that magic angle twisted, okay? And now we can continue the fabrication with, uh, you know, with a similar procedure. So our device geometry, you know, we continue doing fabrication, and our device geometry is like this. We have, the magic angle twisted by layer graphene, which is encapsulated top and bottom with hexagonal boron nitride. And we have source and drain electrodes. And then we also have a nearby metallic electrode in a field effect transistor geometry. So with this metallic electrode, we can change the density of electrons in the magic angle graphene. Now, just a reminder of the electronic properties of monolayer graphene, so regular graphene, okay? The conductivity of graphene versus density has this V shape, okay? If you have lots of you know, holes in your system, graphene conducts very well. If you have lots of electrons in your system, graphene conducts very well. If your Fermi energy is at the charge neutrality point, you conduct poorly because you have few charge carriers. So conductivity of graphene versus charge density has this V shape around the charge neutrality point. 
Yeah. Now let's have a look at what happens when you have magic angle twisted by layer of him. Okay. So this is the conductance versus charge density for a real you know, device, magic angle graphene. As you can see, near charge neutrality, you still have this V shape because it remembers that it comes from graphene. But you see there is a lot of other structure here, which was not present for regular graphene, okay? So in order to understand it, we have to think about this electronic structure, okay? So remember that I told you that we have a fourfold, you know, degeneracy, spin up, spin down, valley K, valley K prime. Turns out if you put, you know, four holes per more unit cell starting, starting from charge neutrality, okay, from zero, you remove four electrons or put four holes per more unit cell, your chemical potential goes here in the middle of this band gap, okay? You go from zero to the middle of this band gap. There, your chemical potential is in a band insulator. Therefore, you have zero conductance. This is what happens here. Okay. Similarly, if you put four electrons per molar unit cell, your chemical potential goes here to the middle of this other band gap. And therefore, you have an insulated behavior, no conductance. Okay. Remember that, that four is because of spin and valley. Now, the interesting thing that happens is that if you put just two holes per more unit cell. Your chemical potential is in the middle, okay, of the um, balance band here, okay? In principle, magic angle graphene with the chemical potential there should be a very good metal. You're in a region of very high density of states and the system should be a very good metal. However, as you can see, the conductance of the system is zero. The system is an insulator. This insulator does not have a single particle origin but it's a correlated insulator. Okay? The same thing happens if we put two electrons per molar unit cell. You put your chemical potential here and you have a correlated insulator. This thing only happens, this behavior only happens if you have, okay, twist angles between the two graphene sheets, which are very close to about 1.1 degrees, okay? If you go to 1.3 degrees or 0.8 degrees, this type of behavior is not observed. Now, an interesting thing happens, okay, when you put your chemical potential a little bit away from two holes per more unit cell or two electrons per more unit cell. In particular, when you dope a little bit further away from two holes per more unit cell, it turns out magic angle graphene becomes superconducting, okay? The resistance versus temperature experiences this precipitous drop to zero, Okay, the data for the devices. By now we have many more devices. Moreover, because we can tune the density with our gate voltage, we can tune the superconducting, you know, the key critical temperature of a superconductor. So magic angle twisted by graphene is a, an electrically tunable superconductor. Okay. Now, when my students showed me this data, the first thing that, that I you know this reminded me is phase diagrams such as this, okay? This is the phase diagram of the cuprates, which I've seen hundreds of times. Now, in the cuprates, they get the electron and hole doping axis opposite to what I showed here, so let me flip them for you, okay? So in the cuprates, a doping of one elect, you know, one hole per copper atom is a mode insulator. That's what zero doping means, it means one, okay? Ready? One hole per copper atom, or, uh, then you have a mode insulator, a correlated insulator state, which is a mode insulator. If you keep doping, you know, if you dope with extra holes, you have a superconducting dome. If you dope with extra electrons, you have a smaller superconducting dome. Okay. So this is sorry, this corresponds to one electron per copper atom. This is what I meant. No, no, electron hole. So in magic angle twisted by graphene, at a doping of two holes per more unit cell, you have a correlated insulator. If you dope with extra holes, you have a superconducting dome. If you don't with electrons, you also get a superconducting dome. Now, of course, there is a big difference between these two systems. In this system, you have to grow hundreds of crystals to populate this phase diagram, okay? Often from different materials classes. This, however, you can do electrically continuously, you know, by dialing the voltage knob. So that is, you know, something which is very interesting. And you can do this in a single disorder realization. In this field of more quantum matter, 
one of the interesting things, in my opinion, is that it has meant the merging of three modern condensed matter communities. One is the field or the community of 2D van der Waals materials and heterostructures. Another one is the field of strongly correlated materials, people that did cuprates, nictites, et cetera, heavy fermions. And another one is the topological condensed matter physics community, the people that did quantum hole, fractional quantum hole, topological insulators, Waals semi metals, et cetera. All three of these come together in the field of more quantum matter. And one of my biggest satisfactions is the joy that I experience in discussing with all of my colleagues about these issues, okay? So in fact, back in 2019, we you know, predicted to end with my theory colleagues at MIT that there would be these nearly fraction bands in more super lattices with a variety of you know, quantized anomalous call effects that could be seen with different you know, numbers. And there was related theory work and you know, almost simultaneously, you know, very soon after, a group of David Goldhaber Gordon at Stanford reported a very large anomalous hole effect in magic angle twisted vinyl graphene aligned to hexagonal boron nitride. And you know, about a year later, the group of Andrea Young showed the quantized anomalous hole effect. So the quantum hole effect at zero magnetic field, you know, again in magic angle twisted vinyl graphene aligned to HBN. Yeah. And also there was similar experimental work on ABC trilayer graphene aligned to HBM. So topology again plays a fundamental role in the physics of magic angle graphene. In, the, in between, we have also looked at the next generation Moray quantum matter, something that I call Moray magic 3.0. Okay. So uh, last year, a uh, group of, you know, Philip Kim at uh, Harvard, you know, fellow Korean colleague of all of yours, and my group, we reported back-to-back -back papers in Nature and Science about the discovery of a second Moray superconductor, magic angle twisted trilayer graphene, is an ultra strongly coupled superconductor with even more interest in physics than the bilayer counterpart. Yeah? In particular, it realizes this ultra strong coupling superconductivity. So, you know, let me just go quickly through this. But um, basically, in the you know when we compare superconductors, you know, usually we have this plot, which is called Neumuller plot of the critical temperature versus the Fermi temperature on this X and Y axis, okay? In logarithmic scale. And most, you know, conventional superconductors, we couple BCN superconductors like aluminum are in this corner of the diagram, okay? As we go diagonally towards this purple band, you have more strongly and strongly coupled superconductors, okay? Superconductors with very high PC compared with the Fermi temperature. In fact, all of the unconventional superconductors are in this purple band, cuprates and nictites, organics, heavy fermions. Magic angle twisted bilayer graphene and trilayer graphene, okay, sit here. They're among the most strongly coupled superconductors that we know, in fact, pretty much the strongest couple superconductors that we know, okay? So it is not clear what makes the pairing glue in magic angle graphene so strong. How come that with such a diluted system of electrons, you can have such relatively high temperature for superconductivity, yeah? So um, we have also measured recently, not just, you know, Mori Magic 3.0, but Mori Magic 4.0 and 5.0, okay? So two groups and also the group of, you know, Emmanuel Tutuk recently we published, you know, papers back to back showing that you can have actually superconductivity also in magic angle four layer graphene and magic angle five layer graphene, okay? So now we have a family of more superconductors, a family of robust more superconductors, okay? And probably if you continue adding layers, you will also get superconductivity. Now, I have discussed a lot about graphene. Uh, let me, in, in, in 10 minutes or so, tell you about more magic beyond graphene, okay? 